Can you tell me what sets these two brands apart? Yes, they use different colors, fonts, and styles, but that's not all. You see, one of these brands was strategically designed. This means that during the design process, research and analysis of the industry was conducted to ensure that the visual identity created for the brand became the driving force behind building brand awareness, increasing sales, and establishing the business as a unique player in its industry. But what does this process involve? Well, let me introduce you to Dig It Coffee Co, a brand I created for a coffee shop in Las Vegas. But this isn't just any coffee shop. Digit employs adults with disabilities to provide them with a purposeful place of work where they feel valued and a sense of belonging. So I gathered this information about the business during the first stage of my brand strategy process, which is the strategy call. Now, during this call with the client, we dove into the business to uncover their story, target audience, competitors, and design preferences. Now, using these insights, I conducted analysis and research into both the brand and their industry, focusing on three key areas, brand foundations, brand positioning, and creative direction. Now, let's dive into the first part of brand strategy and examine how these findings are reflected in Digit's visual identity. So the first stage involves identifying the brand's foundations, which are deeply rooted within the business and shaping everything the brand does. So these foundations consist of four areas, purpose, mission, vision, and values. So during the strategy call, the client mentioned their desire to build a supportive community of like-minded people. So I identified this as the business's purpose as it aligns with the reason the business was created. Now from this identification, ideas began to take shape. So during the design stage, I used their purpose as inspiration when creating the brand pattern. The pattern is busy, imperfect, and compact, resembling a group of people interacting in a lively and bustling place, which complements the purpose of building a close close-knit community. Then the brand's mission and vision also inspired ideas for the visual identity, as the client used words like joyful, supportive, and friendly to describe the brand. I then translated these words into the brand colors. Yellow was chosen to convey warmth and support. Blue represents calmness and a safe environment, and pink symbolizes joy and positivity. During the call, another topic that was frequently mentioned was inclusion. So the client explained that sign language is commonly used in their workplace, and I recognized this as one of their core values of the brand and later drew inspiration from it when designing the illustrations. So I created illustrations of hands with various expressions and incorporated them into the brand pattern. Now these illustrations have become a significant part of Digit's visual identity and have even been used individually on merchandise and other brand touch points. Now on to the second stage, brand positioning, which consists of four areas, target audience, competitor analysis, personality, and voice. So during the target audience stage, I focused on segmenting the business's audience and creating personas. So these personas represent the type of people the brand is trying to attract and identifying these personas for a brand will help shape their voice, messaging and personality, which we'll come on to shortly. Next, during competitor analysis, I conducted industry research to understand what other brands were doing. This helped me identify trends and determine how Digit could differentiate itself. I then took it one step further and researched the top three competitors of the brand to identify their strengths and weaknesses. From this analysis, I immediately noticed the overuse of the color brown and use of cups in the industry's branding. Therefore, I made sure to completely avoid these when developing the creative direction. This research on the competitors was also helpful when designing the logo type. So I opted for a bold condensed sans serif typeface that was not commonly used in the industry. Now this choice effectively communicated Digit's strong stance in supporting those who feel unaccepted, aligning perfectly with their mission. The next step was to identify the brand's personality because just like people, brands have different personalities that define who they are and how they present themselves to the world. Now, by this point in the brand strategy process, I already had a really good understanding of the brand, and it was just a matter of using the slider in my presentation to visually showcase the personality to the client. One of Digit's strongest traits is unconventionality, which I derived from their mission. I wanted to incorporate this message into their logo, so I customized the G to stand out from the rest of the logo type. Now, this customization was driven by a few intentions. 
to showcase their playful and fun personality, to emphasize that they approach things differently and go against the norm, to promote their mission of helping those who feel out of place to be accepted in their community. And then the bottom of the G was designed to resemble a coffee bean connecting back to the product without being gimmicky. The final step in brand positioning was to identify the brand's voice, which is the language used to express its personality. So by establishing this, it ensures that the client has a guide to follow when communicating to their audience. This stage also helped in the design of the brand's logo type. Now, initially I struggled with the layout of the words Coffee Co. However, by revisiting the strategy and doing some brainstorming, the idea of creating a circular icon resembling the sun with Coffee Co placed inside came to mind. Now, this concept was inspired by the words friendly and uplifting mentioned in the brand voice section. I also went on to add a semicircle to create a smiley face, reinforcing their positive and uplifting message. Once I'd gone through all the stages of brand positioning, it was time to move on to the final stage of my brand strategy process, which is creative direction. So here I used all the research and information gathered from the previous stages to develop a strategic creative direction for Digit's visual identity. So this involved creating two annotated mood boards to present my ideas and thought process to the client, allowing them to choose the one that best aligned with their vision. So they chose mood board one, and here you can see how I used the mood board as a guide to design the entire visual identity. Including a strategy stage in my design process has made designing brands so much more enjoyable. It gives me confidence that the client and I are on the same page regarding the creative direction, and every design decision is supported by a strategic approach. If you're interested in incorporating strategy into your design process, check out my brand strategy presentation template. It will help you get started. I'll leave a link to it in the description. That's just my baby dog. That's just my baby dog.